um, you know, and this leads her to go to her to her doctor, who basically is like, you know, you should go check out this resort. It, it, it could do wonders for you. You know, it'll get you back on track. And so she agrees, um, but. Under the circumstances that her 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 fiance or her husband um, can also go with her, so when when they when they when they go, there's all of these weird kind of all of the patients are super oddballs. You have like this um, this older gentleman who is just like get, looks like he's given up on life. He wants to when, when they're when they're at the this kind of bonfire thing. He's like trying to kill himself. Uh, he almost spills yeah, the beans. Yeah, he's like my teeth. My, my teeth are so sharp. Yeah. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> and, he, and he starts running or attempting to run uh, to the to the bonfire and throw himself in, and they all grab him. But uh, that's pretty hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I think the first night will be cut to later when they're sleeping and she's kind of, um, she's hearing all these howls from the woods. Yes. And, uh, that's when she wakes her, uh, she wakes Bill up and she's like, Bill, Bill, there's, you know, uh, I, I'm hearing howls, you know, there's, there's something outside. And she's like, I, I know it's a wolf or something. And he's like, Karen, you're born in the city. You're raised in the city, you know? There are sounds out here, basically, that you've never heard before. So just, you know, calm down, go back to sleep. Basically, was what he's trying to tell her. Um, but um, I, I took that as, you know, all the were- they they all transformed into werewolves and they were just roaming the woods. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, if I were her, as soon as that happened, I, if I were her, I would have just closed the window. Because she just, she just goes back to sleep and leaves the window open. <laughs> Um, I'm like, okay, yeah, you're not that scared then because the window's still wide open and you're like three feet from the window. Um, but yeah, that makes sense. Eighties, <laughs> eighties logic for you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and then, um, as she, as, as Karen gets more suspicious, she, uh, we get like kind of our subplot with her friends who go to investigate, um, the the serial killer from the beginning of the film, and I think they go uh, to to kind of uh, check out the body, and then they realize that the 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 body has disappeared from the morgue. <laughs> the classic line: "Well, it could have just got up and walked away." And you have like huge claw marks on the on the if you look at the. I forget what those are called, like, but there's like the gurney where they keep them so that they're they're like on cooler. Yeah, it's like a slab type of deal. Yeah, yeah. And they keep them locked in there, and and it's clear that he like broke out. Um, and so I think that that that's around the part where her friend and her friend's boyfriend they're that they're invest so they're investigating the serial killer, and they realize that he's linked to the colony as well yeah or that he was a patient there or something and um what gave what gave uh, her friend and um i think it was, was it chris and terry yes terry and chris that's correct yeah what gave what gave them the idea to look at a um to go into like a um that kind of um a cult store was it because of all the like the bones and stuff that were hanging around in his apartment? Yeah, yeah, I think that they're okay. uh huh. I think that's why they went down that road. And then you have like a great cameo by the the late Dick Miller, who is. Uh... I, I was I was just gonna say I love him in this movie. <laughs> I think everything everything that he's in, the little tiny parts that he's in in, in most movies that I've seen him in. He's great. He steals. He steals the show um, for, for whatever reason. I think he just, just you know, wait the, the the two minutes or three minutes that we see him on screen is uh, for me at least. I think he is just really captivating, or he was really captivating in just those little moments. He knew how to work the camera and how to how to. Um, he had something about him that was uh, magical. 
Yeah, I 100% agree. And he's um, he's just kind of talked shit to them the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but they, so they end up going, what do they, what do they get from the, from the store when they go and see him? Um, it's a bunch of books on like werewolves. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when he tells them, he shows them this, he's like, oh yeah, people believe in all types of crap. And, and they're like, oh, and then they, I think they ask him like, like, do you believe in this or something? He's like, no, I'm a salesman. He's like, it's my job to sell people on this. He's like, but I got tons of. I got tons of books on this stuff, so, you know, what do you want me to do? And then he shows him a case of, uh, he's like, these are uh, genuine silver bullets. Uh, some guy had them made, and um, and uh, he was going to pick them up, and he's, you know, skipped town or whatever, so I have them here now. Uh, but they're real silver bullets, and you can use them. He's like, but, um, and then, you know, they, I think that was kind of foreshadowing to, you know, what was going to happen later on. Um but they uh, then I, I think it cuts to the, uh, Terry uh, deciding to go and meet up with um, with Karen at the uh, at the what do they call it the community the, uh, the colony I believe colony yeah the colony yeah so she uh, drives up there uh, to go meet Karen at the colony and I think uh, Chris decides that he's going to stick behind and kind of do some more research and see what he can find out uh, if, or if he can find out any more about uh, Eddie. Uh, the serial killer uh, or, and see if they can you know find him or find his body um, and I think uh, Terry's only there for like a day or two yeah and I think that the like low key the, the colony all the people are not really liking that she's there yeah yeah cause she's snooping around um which, which... Well, we skipped we skip, we skip over the part where Bill um, got attacked in the woods. Yeah, yeah. So before Terry, before Terry gets there, um, the girl, what's uh, what's her name? The nymphomaniac, uh, uh, Marsha. Yeah, Marsha. <laughs> yeah. While um, while Karen and 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 Bill are at the um, at the bonfire like towards the middle of the film she he's like he loses her in in the scenario and he's he's kind of wandering around looking for for karen and and he stops and talks to marcia and he's like hey i'm looking for my wife and she just looks at him like super sketchy and she's just like why (laughs) savage thirst trap and then uh he he's he's pretty good about playing it down and he just kind of walks away but it's like she's already zoned in on him. Like she's she's gonna yeah. she's gonna have him at some point, you know. And, and then, Karen already has this feeling about her. She's like, I know you're going with that Marsha girl. Yeah, <laughs> I know she has eyes for you. Which is like kind of weird because uh, Karen or D. Wallace is a pretty good looking lady. Yeah, you know. Um. But yeah, like you said, Bill ends up getting it uh, scratched um, while in the forest, which causes him, of course, to to become carry on the the werewolf cor- curse. And um, you know, and then uh, Karen wakes up in the middle of the night to get comfort from Bill, and and he's not there, and she thinks it's really weird, and she just kind of pouts and doesn't really question it anymore uh and then yeah. and then we see we see the reason why bill's not there is that he's meeting up with marsha like uh in the middle of the woods and they're gonna do some unsavory things and that's yeah, where they, just, uh, they have some werewolf uh werewolf sex yeah it, it, it's funny because that scene is so it feels so long because they're just like <laughs> yeah it's very 80s and very, um, for the time, probably very explicit what they're doing or how they how they're showing, you know. And I think that they even wanted originally more more nudity. Like that was supposed to be the plan is to push the nudity as much as possible in this. But um, yeah, they they tussle around for a while and then they start to change. Um, and then you hear all the uh, everyone else howling, all the other werewolves howling around them, 
you don't see anything but you hear the howling and then um and then the two marsha and bill start to change and then it goes into this weird animated sequence <laughs> <laughs> that was so yeah that was like i was like wow <laughs> even Alyssa, like i had mentioned before uh on off air that Alyssa had watched it with me and she's like what the fuck are we watching <laughs> because of that scene she's like holy crap <laughs> Uh, I was like, yeah, they, maybe they ran out of money. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's like, um, you could have just like cut, you know, like yeah. We we didn't need the we didn't need that to, you know. I I don't understand how that made the scene better, but what do what do we know? I guess. Um, right. Uh, so that's when uh, that's when Terry meets up. That's right. So, because yeah. Bill starts acting really suspicious, then uh, Terry ends up going there by herself without without Chris stays behind, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, he stays behind to, I think, do some more research on on uh, Eddie Quist um, or, or to find out where, uh, where he went. So then Terry goes up and she's... Um, I know she uh, at one point um, she's there for a little bit, and they're t- on the beach talking. Um, they make a, uh, I think Terry brings a like ribs or something to eat. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and then she's like, oh, she's like, because uh, Bill throughout the whole entire film, Bill makes it known that he doesn't eat meat. He's a vegetarian. And then it cuts to uh, she says, hey, oh, I'm sorry, all I made was ribs. And she's like, oh, I think she said something about, like, I feel so sorry for Bill. And she's like, sorry about the ribs, Bill. And he's like, oh, no, don't worry about it. If I'm hungry enough, I'll eat, I'll eat anything. And he's just munching on the ribs. And uh, that's when I do believe... Um, Terry, um, Terry the, the next... She goes on her own her own little adventure, basically. Oh, yeah, to, to do some kind of investigating. And then she ends up being um, attacked by, by a werewolf. Because, uh, well, she gets attacked at the at the cabin. I think it's Marsha's cabin first. Yeah, first. Yeah, and she yeah. she's and able. She cuts off. She she's able to escape by cutting off one of the hands to uh, one of the werewolves that was attacking her. Yeah, she's able to get out of the cabin, and she gets into this kind of side panel thing. But the wolf figures out where she's at. But she ends up having a grabbing a hatchet. Um, <clears throat> And taking off the the wolf's arm, her forearm. Yeah. And she gets away. Uh, she goes to I think the doctor's office, and immediately, of course, calls Chris and tells him like he he has to get up there immediately. That. And, and then the and then like it reveals like the, there's another wolf, right there, like yeah, in the in the room, and he starts just thrashing on her while while chris is still on the phone and he's just helpless and hearing everything yeah i think um yeah that, that's that's when uh, he takes off and he calls the uh, i i want to say the sheriffs in that in that county or wherever it's at um and tells them you know to go to the colony and uh, the, or the sheriff's like well I'll, I'll go ahead and meet you up there i'll call the state troopers and everything or whatever but he's we'll super relaxed there. about it he's just yeah, like yeah he's just chilling with his feet up on the on the chair he's like don't worry i'm sure everything's fine like <laughs> <laughs> while he's eating um yeah and then he um that's when uh chris he goes back to that like a cult store um, and then he goes and snatches up the uh, the silver bullets. Um, I think he, he pays them more. I, I don't know. I think he gives them like 40 bucks or something. And, and then uh, Dick Miller's like, Ew, I don't know how much those are. I got to get him a praise first. He's like, bill me. <laughs> yeah. And he takes off. Um, but yeah, he had, he's heading up there. Um, and what happens? That, oh, um, Karen ends up going to the the doctor's office uh, because her and Bill get in a fight uh, she accuses him of uh, uh, messing around with uh, with Marsha and he backhands her um, which was crazy and um, 
He's like, oh, I'm sorry, baby. Like right after he 